are, ladies and gentlemen, to own uh, Ontario Sino Lacrosse. And of course, we have uh, Clearview Crushers in the own sound, Bug Juice North Stars. And we're just going to finish up with the anthem. Center and JD MacArthur Arena here tonight. I'm Spencer Byers. You're doing your color tonight here with the great Gord Chapman. Lucky to join me tonight for the Senior B game. I had Mike Garrett for the Junior B, who sadly could not pull out a win tonight against St. Catharines. But we'll see if the Senior B's have a little better luck here against the Clearview Crushers. And their lovely blue, or their lovely purple jerseys. But quickly, we'll look at starting goalies there, and it's Jake Lazone. Fantastic. Not very good stats, but the one stat you're missing. There, the great Mark Perry. He has seven assists on the stat sheet, which is absolutely astronomical for a goalie in just four games. He won his muster, one of their main playmakers. Getting set for the opening faceoff in number 25, and of course, that's Drew Barker. Barker. Oh, and talking about faceoff, score, I gotta tell you, Carson Stevenson lost one faceoff tonight for the season, for the junior B. Just let I tell you that Carson Stevenson still a fantastic faceoff guy. Graham Bergsma getting set. There's the the draw picked up. That's a loose ball all over the trying to get control, but going down the right right wing is number 22 Scott Edward. Edward loses it, picked up quickly by 71, and that's Tyler Hall. Trying to move that ball all over. The, these guys can run, and they're going to move around to get open. There's the chance. There's the shot. Scores right off the bat. Number 88, and that's uh, Mike Feegan. Gets the first one of the evening. Of course, you're going to watch. There's a, you're going to see the nice setup by Barfoot. Quick. Goal here by the Orange Sound senior B North Stars, and that is Mike Fiega, number 88. Pat Saunders also involved in that play, and uh, the nice pass, got, picking that ball up quickly. Oh, it's that in again. His buck. Loose ball in the crease, picked up by the goaltender, Lazor. Here he comes, they come out. Trying to pass it up the wing, does get it up there to Romano, and Romano. Still holding onto the ball, then dropped it off to number 77, and that was Atwood. Atwood is the top scorer in the in the league. There's the shot. North Star ball, no back out. Romano. Romano picks it up. Back across, there's the shot. Sometimes hard. There's a high sticking call, and it's going to go against Clearview. Dumped it off. Thompson has it. Thompson looking for the open man. Little bounce pass across, across the floor. Thompson has it again. Looking for the open man. Six on five. Thompson looking for a lane. Passes it inside cross going. There's a shot off the goaltender, Lazor. Back outside, there's the shot clock, and of course, penalty slashing. Be number 77. Is that Chris Atwood? Chris Atwood got the slashing call. I'm pretty sure it is. That looks to be. Wow, yeah, Mark Perry just told him my ear. I got a chance to interview Chris Atwood pre-game. You know, if you see that between the second and third period. He said he takes a lot of dumb penalties and he's got to limit those and add it to his list. North Stars. Inside that circle, Lazor makes a good stop. Looking for a long lead pass. Let's get it up the floor. Nice play as he hung on to that ball. Number 23, and that's uh, Bomberry. He's just going to run around and run the shot clock off, kill off some time. Passes it off into the corner. Good control by Mint, by Clearview. There's a shot, misses the net. Picked up by Thompson. Thompson just dumps off and hits the bench. 
Still 117 remaining in the power play. Buck. Buck has it. They're moving that ball around so nicely. Buck in the center, looking for the lane, takes the shot, scores! Buck gets one, 2 nothing. Buck Juice North Stars take the lead here early in the first period. And that's a power play marker. You're gonna watch it on replay. The ball will come back to Buck. He'll be right down the middle, gets a shot, bounces off the floor, gets it by Lazor, but not any problem at all. Absolute rocket there by Buck. It makes an early 2-0 lead here for the North Stars and get another power play marker, adding to their power play percentage. Uh, oh, and a violation there against the North Stars. Power play percentage of 33%, going up a little bit higher with that one. But now without went out of the box score, the bet top goal scorer and point getters back on the floor for Clearview. There's the shot, good stop by Garrett Reed. Reed just squeezes it, manages to get the play stop. Ball up the floor to Hall. And he's being roughed up in the middle. Finally breaks away. As, as Haig tried to get it and finally loose ball. Given up. There's coming on goal. There's the shot. Scores. Mike. And no goal. Mike Mc, Mike McLeod there getting some rough work. The captain of the Bug Juice North Stars here getting roughed up a little bit. They're going to send him to the box. He got his helmet ripped right off. But he looked to be number 63 there, Lucas Beaver, the second leading point getter and goal scorer on this Crushers team with, I believe, 12 points, yes, and eight goals. And you get a chance to see it here. Give him a little shove, and Beaver was not happy about it, and he got a hold of him for it. Well, they ended up both getting penalties, and the goal was disallowed, so play happened before they scored. It's a five for the Crushers for probably pulling off his bucket. We'll see what McLeod ends up getting. McLeod smiling in the penalty box. Does he know when he gets out, they're going to have a three-minute penalty? Be four on four for two minutes, and then it'll be a five or three, uh, five on four for three minutes. There for the senior B North Stars. I do quickly want to mention here, Gord, the Clearview Crushers average 41 penalty minutes a night, so expect them to be in the box quite a bit tonight. Well. That's not going to win you any games, and you've got to, you've got to keep that kind of stuff under control. Four on four right now, long lead pass up the floor. Now you can see why their goaltender, the source, scores. Has so many assists. Yeah. He's Reed. really going after Gary Reed. Yeah, but Reed's out of his goal crease, so he's a player. Lead pass off the stick. Of Tom McDonald. Ball takes up and come again. With the ball is Jake McNabb. Jake is in the top 10 scorers in the, in, the, in the league, so he's doing quite well. I believe he's sixth. Yes, Campbell. He and another one for Owen Sound. Boy, I'm telling you. Four on four, and they're still looking at a three on three minute power play coming down. Number 44, and that was Tanner Buck that got the shot to put it in. You're going to see it on the screen. Buck gets the nice pass coming into the slot area, and then boom, up over the shoulder of Lazor. That's his second of the night, Gord, adding to his season total so far. They saw. And ball goes to the North Stars, an infraction during the faceoff. Far side to Barfoot. Barfoot just dumps it off. Chasing up the floor is Thompson. Thompson twists and turns with the ball, gets it back out to the center of the floor as Mike Feagan has it. Feagan dumps it off. Could be a high stick there. That thing got up pretty close on this side. Pass across the floor and it's knocked into the corner. And Lazor knocked his man. Loose ball, they bounce it around for it. Talk and about talk about being a player there, Gord. Oh, no doubt. He was uh, three blue sh uh, purple jerseys around him, and uh, he managed to try to create it all kinds of havoc. Didn't get a shot. Lost the ball to the shot clock. Atwood. Atwood has the ball. Atwood looking somebody to give it to. Does. 
It's hard to read the numbers off the backs of these jerseys, so number 23, and of course that's Bomberry. Bomberry twisting and turning with the ball, looking for an open lane. Can't find it. That wouldn't have fired. Shot on goal, and of course Garrett Reed makes the stop, covered that corner with, with tight to the post. And now it's the five in, it's the five on four power play for the next three minutes. They can score two or three goals in this because the player's not coming out of the penalty box, so they're just hanging on to it. Buck at center, Hall back outside to Thompson. Thompson Hall was was just slapped on the backside, and uh, no call on that. Loose ball up the floor. Picked up by Goodchild. Atwood looking for the ball. And Atwood does have it now. Atwood, number 77. Flannery trying to get open. Can't. Stolen. And the North Stars heading up the floor. There's the shot. Good save by Labore. As Tyler Hall's had a chance. And then he just dumps it back outside. To Simon. Then Simon just passes it off. You know, Simon hangs onto it. Five on four still. Buck trying to get set. Can't. From ball comes back out. Buck has it now. There's a shot in the far side. It over to Thompson. Thompson. There's the shot off the shoulder of the bouncing around. Lazor picks it up and takes it up the floor. It's Dante Romano. Romano's waiting for some help to come off the bench. Romano stops, turns. His man takes him into the corner. That's Barfoot with him. Barfoot staying with him. And then... Good child has it, takes it off. And the North Stars have the ball. And that's number 17, Zach Thomas. Thompson. Just passes it off, gets it set up. 101, 107 left in the in the power play. To Pat Saunders. Saunders. Looking for the open lane. There's the shot. It's wide and it bounces back out towards center. Quick inside. Looking for the shot to get the clock. Two seconds. And they get it put away. They get the goal. Another power play marker. Good play. That's Andy Campbell with his first tonight. His fifth goal this season for the Senior B North Stars. Campbell gets one. Boy, 50 seconds left in the power play, too, and they've still got a chance to do the to play five, uh, six on five and uh, or five on four on the court. Great shot by Campbell as he managed to put that away. Face off. Ball heads towards the bench. Zach Thomas tries to get it, picks it up. Thomas has it. A little bit of pushing and shoving going on. The Buck's wide open. He scores. Buck right down the floor. Took my eye off it for a moment. Spencer picked it up when he was doing it. I thought there was going to be some kind of uh, brouhaha at the, at the bench. And I kind of, but nice play as Buck got a hold of it. And I quickly want to mention this is Buck's first game. For the senior B North Stars, he doesn't have a stat to his name. He's got number three in about eight minutes of play. So if that's just a taste of what he's going to bring to the senior B squad this year, Gord, I'm I'm not sure this is a uh, it's been a pretty good omen for him so far. Well, I, these guys, these rosters are always in flux because they try and pick up the best players they possibly can. This is a huge pickup for these guys at this part of the season. And here are the standings. You see there the Six Nation River men who Owen South lost to yesterday, 15 to 8. They uh, they're 5 and 0 currently. Then the Ennismore James gang, they're 2 and 2. They actually beat the Oakville Rock. They've only played two games this year. Then you see Owen Sound there in the third spot. We're occupying second when our game had finished, but because of Ennismore beating Oakville, who was 1 and 0 before that game, they're now in sec second possession with the games played. So. Clear view, see there at the very bottom of your screen. They're in the sixth position, one and four on the year. And Gord, as you said, 41 penalty minutes per game is about 41 too many if you expect to win any 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 contest of any kind, especially a game like lacrosse where power plays are so util so well utilized. Well, you know, Spencer, these guys are going to face off again, but you cannot make the mental errors. And these guys have got they want to improve as a lacrosse team. They're going to have to stay out of the penalty box. Owen sounds up 5 nothing. The first period isn't even over yet. There's 12 minutes to go in it. Yeah, we just started the first period, basically. Basically, this is just eight minutes gone, and they've got five goals. 
And I and think two, two of the power play. Two of the power play, and then uh, that uh, five on two, or two, and then they ended with a three three minute power play, scored two goals on it. So, or pardon me, one on it, I guess, uh, but they got one on the first part of it too. So. Yeah, the four on four. Yeah. They're ever trying to get in a goal. Canton steps into the goal crease. Ball goes to Garrett Reed, and Reed passes it up just over the head of Halls, and Halls going to chase it down. Gets a hold. Ball's bouncing. Trying to scoop it up. It's loose. Picked up by number seven, and that's Atwood. Craig Atwood. Now with the ball is 22. Scott Edward. He just heads to the bench. Coming up the floor with the ball. Bob Milnes, Milnes just dumps it off. Trying to get something set up, and then the shot clock goes, he still shoots, and no goal. Thought he should have got a penalty for that because the shot clock went, he just kept coming, shoot it, so people can get hurt doing that. North Stars with the ball. That actually happened in the junior B game earlier today, Gore, there was a, uh, I think, I one of the only sound players got in trouble for it. I think it was Don Millman got unsportsmanlike for it. A nice play inside, there's the shot, I just wide. He got that ball in close. North Stars can pass it, good control. Lazor can't control the ball and it goes in. That's Jake McNabb, Jake. the leading point getter and now goal scorer for the Owen Sound Bug Juice North Stars. Number 15 in points, number six for goals and McNabb showing why he's been one of the top players here for this North Star team. Well, it, you're gonna see the replay. You can see. See, Lazor had it in his feet and then turned and then it trickled off into the goal. You watch it from this angle, you'll see him. He has it, tries to kick it, and when he does, he kicks it into the goal. That I makes thought, it 6 nothing. not even half of you the first score. I thought that was Riley Thompson that got the goal, but you said it was um, Jake McNabb got the goal. Jake McNabb, sixth in scoring in the league, so he just picked up another one. Down the floor, Zach Thompson. Thompson has it. Little pass. Gets it off to Buck. His Buck got right away from his man. Inside. Nice pass. Coulter couldn't hang on to it. Lost the ball. Clearview picks it up and comes up the floor. And four, 46 heading to the bench. I don't have them on my sheet. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so they've got the ball, trying to move it around just outside the perimeter, not being able to get the shot off the glass and picking it up nicely. A little bit of, little bit of stick work there by the North Stars. Across the board, Flannery has it. Flannery tried to get inside, couldn't. Nice defensive play. Keep him outside, and he had to twist and turn to send the ball out where it was in less trouble. 10 is Anderson and he gets, we're gonna get a penalty, it's gonna be holding. Anderson tried to get inside with that twist and it turned and, and I believe it's number 20, Travis Gibbons that's gonna come to the penalty box. I actually think it's 19, Nick Wade getting the and call because there was two of them, it was him and, yeah, there's the hold right there by number 19. Yeah, you're Wade. right, Nick uh, Quaid. And I quickly do want to mention the number nine also in that scrum was Brady Stewart, the older brother of Calvin and Brandon Stewart, both on the Junior B North Stars. Uh, lacrosse family, so. It's one thing about this town, you play lacrosse, you play hockey, and uh, the whole family gets involved in it, so. Clearview having the ball on the outside, takes the shot, good stop by Garrett Reed, and Reed can't control the rebound, trying to get a hold of it, finally does. And a purple jersey stepped into the circle, and there's a long lead pass just out of the of Halls as he had a chance chasing after it. As it just missed his stick as he was going breaking down the steals the ball. There's a shot. Lazor makes the save. And then possession will go to the North Stars. North Stars have the ball, trying to get some people into play. As they all come off the bench. Remember though, Gord, the North Stars are on the penalty kill right now. It's five on four in favor of the Clearwater. There's the shot and fine. Lazari has it and he's not sure where the equipment. We ran and there it is up in the big side of his pad. Is it? He throws it up the floor. I Picked do, up by Beaver. I do quickly want to mention this score. We had some problems with the shot clocks in the junior B game. 
that shot clock and the, other, the closest one of the North Stars wasn't matched up properly. So just keep your eye on the shot clock tonight just in case something happens with another malfunction. There's a shot just whistled wide. Ball comes bouncing back down the floor. Mazur has it. Gets it up to the Bomberry. Bomberry long pass right into the slide. There's a shot. And ball is stopped by Reed point blank. Reed looking at a 6 nothing shutout right now. I guess I shouldn't mention that because that'll blow it because. Gord, how could you blow this hat blue? Balkums at center and we're trying to get control of it does and that's Romano. Romano has it, gets a whistle. Now Ball. possession will go to Clearview. We got to for them to reset the shot clock. There and they're doing both of them so Clearview has the ball. Looking for an open lane is Atwood. Atwood could put the ball back. He's going to try and get in there. Just dumps it off. There's the shot. Reed gets a piece of it. There's another one. And wide. Mustn't have hit the goal because the shot clock didn't change. I thought he got a piece of it, but coming inside, there's shot. Reed got it again. Tyler Goodchild had a chance. Clear up. Heading up the side is Zach Thomas. Thomas. Thompson, pardon me. Into Jake McNabb. McNabb's got a goal. Then he just dumps it off. McNabb had it again, just could not. And then just knocks the ball towards the goal. Tried to control it. Heading up the floor is Lewis. Lewis. Lewis gives it back to Anderson, and Anderson just dumps it off to. Romano, and there's a long shot, and it it hit the goaltender, and Reed made the save. But I sometimes it's hard to see with that ball moving around as quick as it does. Referee standing right there, letting us know the shot clock got changed. On this side, there's a lane. Reed again making a good stop. Reed's looked really good tonight, Gordon. Even though he hasn't been tested necessarily with some premium opportunities. He's made some pretty good saves to make sure that ball didn't get by him. Well, that last, on that last series, he was really, he had three shots and stopped all three. An injury there for Owen Sound on, J on Jake McNabb. But quickly, I can thank Boston Pizza there for getting us to crew refreshments here tonight. You can see them at 1606 16th Street East here on Owen Sound or call them at 519-370-2003. Like to help them because they help us. And Gord, I'm pretty sure you had a couple pieces of pizza and it was pretty good. I can take some home for me tonight. Garrett. Reed makes another stop. Goes off the glass and the ball goes to Clearview and they have it behind the goal. They set it back outside. Two number 12 and that's Berge, Bergsma. Trying to get inside, they do. And again, Garrett Reed having a good idea with that ball is a little short pass, cross court. Up the floor they come. Of course, 19 is Nick Quaid. Quaid dumps it off, headed it off to, to Campbell, and Campbell gets it off into the corner. Loose ball down along the wall. Trying to get it out, swinging those sticks back. There's a slash across it. Clearview. Up to number 16, Moreno. Moreno gets a shot, and Reed has it again. But the ball goes back to Clearview. Clearview just gets it coming off the bench. Gets it off to Flannery, Flannery. Inside, there's a chance, there's a chance coming. Couldn't get through that wall of white jerseys. Ball comes off and on the floor, knocked away. Reed again, right on top. Ball is inside us. And he just hands it off. Picking it up across, that's Van Odegum across the floor. He gets it back out to Pat Saunders. Saunders almost slipped there. Oh, there could be a little bit of water on the floor. There's a shot. Lazor made a good stop. Four minutes and 20 seconds left in the first period. Owen Sound in charge. Up six to nothing. Ball comes across to Saunders. Saunders going to 
Trying to get open again, Kent gets it back out to Simons, and shot off Lazor. And they pick the ball up, and here comes Kruble. Clearview down the court. And of course, that's Darius Anderson has the ball. Anderson twists and turns, trying to set it up, does get back across. Sets it up to 41, Tyler Goodchild. And of course, Reed picks that ball up. Number 52, Garrett Reed. Strong in this third period, 333. Too many men on Owen Sound. Owen Sound is going to get a too many men on their floor. Just switch possession, they have possession. Yeah, if Owen Sound has possession with too many men, it's just a possession change. If Clearview has the ball and Owen Sound has too many men, then it is a call. One of the many fastest across that does take a difference from hockey. Atwood passed it right out. Good shot. But Green made it. Reed made another good save. And that's number eight, the Romano, who got the throw shot from Atwood. The ball back outside. 41, good job. Ball comes back to the floor. Lazor's going to pick it up. And he can pass that thing. He's got seven assists so far this year. Which is a lot for a goaltender. And only four games, too, might I add. There's a shot. Reed again makes the save on Atwood. He got a piece of it. Loose ball on the floor. Two men on. There's the shot. Oh, what nice save by Lazar. Great, great pass by Koffler as he got it across to number 88. And that was Tyler Simons. And he could not put it away. Sometimes you think he should have shot that, Spence. I mean, what a shot by Fiegan. I, I don't know how, how he even snuck, snuck it in between Lizzo and the, and the bar, but what an opportunity for Owen Sound. And now Brady Stewart playing some defense. Now go on the offense on the rush. Back Thompson. Back outside. And here comes the ball. Just going to set it up. Got it to Thompson. Thompson. Thompson again. There's the shot. Has Zach Thompson had it? We've got two Thompsons out there. We've got Riley, number, and Zach, both Thompsons. There's a the ball bouncing around, picked up by Cremor. Going to bring the ball up the floor. Got it up to Bergsma. Bergsma just going to slowly saunter down the left wing, waiting for some help to come off the bench. Still has the ball. Finally, he gets rid of it up to Atwood. Atwood looking for. We're gonna try and see if they can get out but open. This boy can shoot. He's leading the league in goal and goal to goal scoring, pardon me. Ball comes back. Moving inside, there's the shot. Shot clock went off. No goal if it was a true because of that shot clock was a goal. One 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 or one minute and eleven seconds remaining in this first period. Up the floor. Barfoot, wide barfoot. And he gets cross checked. Barfoot has it. Inside gets the pass right inside that, that checker. There's the shot just whistled wide. Moving after that ball. Shot shot clock just got changed over because it's Clearview ball. Clearview coming up the floor. With the ball, number 23, Jake Bomberry. Bomberry just gets railroaded and rode right into the boards at the other end of the rink. And of course, North Stars pick up the loose ball. And coming up the floor, number 24, and of course, that's Barfoot, wide Barfoot. Barfoot dumps it off, passing behind, coming off the bench, picking it up. They love that cross the, the slot area with that high pass and pick up the guy coming in on the left wing or the right wing, whichever which way you want to do it. 6.10 seconds left in this particular period. And the Crusher just going to hold it. And that's the horn sounds. That's an amazing first period. And you see clear for goaltender being congratulated, probably uh, gave up six goals in this period. But I'll tell you, this own sound offense is just clicking on all eight cylinders. Uh, absolutely. If you're driving a sports car, maybe 10 cylinders. But anyway, Gord, what a start for the Bug Juice North Stars. They didn't have a great start yesterday against Six Nations. Down by as much as seven in the contest. We were able to lose only by set. Well, I think leave seven. 
uh, 15 to 8. But tonight they look really good against Clearview. Clearview, a team again, the bottom of the standings, but you gotta win. The, you gotta win, beat the teams that are in front of you. And right now they're doing that against Clearview. This is true. And Clearview, uh, it, it struggled in that first period. Uh, they just could not seem to get into, and not, no sustained offense, nothing that they could get up the floor, and and then got into penalty trouble, which we talked about in part of, the, and ended up giving up two power play goals. And uh, if you're gonna give uh, some of the players on the own sound team that opportunity play with a man down they've got they, they've got some shooters that can put the ball in uh, absolutely there uh, Jake McNabb got one he's their leading point getter and goal scorer here on the team you also have uh, the new man Bach he's got two or got three tonight pardon me he's got a hat trick in his very first senior B game for Owen Sound this season so getting scoring from all, everybody tonight so far and we're only one period down Gord uh, no doubt that you that this is going to be a, a, a a fairly simple game for, for uh, Owen Sound if they do the things that they've been doing in this first period. If they're going to sit back on their haunches and do and not give the 100 percent, you're going to see this cream or tier come back because they've got some pretty good goal scorers. So looking forward to that in the first period, but uh, we're going to be coming back. We're going to take a short break on Rogers TV. What kind of show do you want to see on Rogers TV? What interests you? Log on to RogersTV.com, fill out a show proposal, and tell us about your segment idea. We want to know what you want to see. Rogers TV, only on Rogers. Between the first and second period, I'm here with Keith Pearl, one of the assistant GM and coaches for the Owen Sound Bug, Owen Sound Bug Juice North Stars. No, loss against Six Nations in your home opener. How much confidence do you have coming into this first game against Clearwater at home to be able to get a win here at the Bay Shore? Well, I think it's just one of those things. Uh, Six Nations has proved to be the top team in our league. Uh, they're undefeated for a reason uh, and showed a bit of what we got to work on. And so it's one of those things when you're back less than 24 hours later. You have a short memory on the bad stuff and a good memory on the good stuff and try and go forward and correct what we did wrong yesterday to bring it to clear view tonight. Absolutely. They have right now the top point getter and top goal scorer in all of the senior B division in Chris Atwood. What have you guys looked at any of his tape to figure how you can get rid of him or is it more just get make limit them offensively period not just one player. Well I think Chris is one of those unique talents. Uh, he's going to get his and it's just a matter of. Uh, you, I don't think you can really shut Chris down. He's just that talented, but it's trying to limit the damage that Chris does to you. Uh, he's such a talented ball player. Uh, he's fun to watch. He's fun to coach against, and, but he's just one of those guys. You try and limit what he's going to get, so and try and reduce that and check him as best you can, but he's going to get his. He's just that good. It's just you try and reduce the damage when he's on the floor and aware when he's on the floor because he makes everyone better. Absolutely. On your team, you have guys like Brady Hasseltine who had a really good game yesterday against Six Nations. How much confidence do you have again in his game coming in today against Clearwater? Or could I, think, uh, now, uh, I think what happened, you got the wrong program. 
but it wasn't Brady, it was Pat Saunders, and Pat's great, and, and, and Pat will really help us. And, and we had two new bodies today, too, so we've brought two more guys in, uh, Tanner Buck and Tyler Halls, both went uh, NLL experience, so we've added a bit of that pro experience to the lineup. So hopefully Tyler, Tanner, and then the addition of Pat. Pat's just a, he's a guy that's played here a couple years, uh, been off and on. Um, the last time he played here, I want to say it was 2018, and Pat puts the ball in the net. And if he can continue to do what he does, we'll be all right. All right, thank you so much, Keith, assistant GM and coach of the Owen South Buggies North Stars. Back up to me and me and Gord after the break. I'm David Sherman, host for Politically Speaking here on Rogers TV. Join me for my next show where my guest will be Alex Ruff, MP for Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. I'm sure right now a lot of you feel like you aren't able to be who you truly are. What's most important, more important than everybody else knowing who you are is that you know who you are. As a young person, time moves slower for you and just know that things will get better. It Gets Better Canada is a registered Canadian charity with a focus on uplifting our queer youth through the power of digital storytelling. As a two-spirit person, I use they, them pronouns, but that's not the case for every two-spirit person. There are so many voices out there that we didn't have 10 years ago, 20 years ago. No matter what your mind tells you, you really are perfect the way you are, so stop beating yourself up so much. I'm gonna be a boy in a dress, because why not? Your identity is explosive. We all have our unique journeys, but one thing that connects us all is the desire to be happy, the desire to celebrate being our authentic selves. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks and it shattered her world. <laughs> Ontario seen it across here on Rogers Television this evening and uh, own sound up six to nothing. They did everything right in that period that you could possibly do. They killed off the penalty, the penalty killing, uh, killed off, I think, two. Uh, they, they got two power play goals, five, five on five. They were superior. Uh, they moved the ball extremely well. I haven't seen anything at this point in time what they did wrong. I mean, I, I agree, Gord. I, not much they did wrong. I mean, what, they took one penalty during which one of the Clearview players took a penalty, so it really wasn't, in the end, a penalty. It was a four-on-four -four opportunity that the only time North Stars scored on, might I add, Bug Juice North Stars. But, you know, yeah, it, it, scoring six goals in a period when you average, I think it's like eight or nine goals a game is definitely going to be a massive boost for you. I'm more worried about how they're going to be able to keep that as much as one of my teachers hates the word momentum going into that second period. Well, momentum, uh, I mean, it's been a cliche in sports forever. Uh, and this is something, when you take a team 6 to nothing in the first period, nine times, the psychological thing is that the team kind of sits back on its haunches, figure they got it, okay? And uh, this is what they have to guard against. They can't let, you know, these guys maybe one and four but they've still got one of the best, two of the best scoring players in the league. And they can do a lot of damage in a period with own sound if they're not careful. Well, so. absolutely. You saw there Keith Peer, the assistant, assistant coach and GM, talked about how Chris Atwood's going to get his. He's got 15 goals in five games. He's got 23 points in five games. He's a leading point getter and goal scorer. So he's going to get his. And he didn't get any in the first period, so you got to expect that he's going to have something special the rest of this game. Well, I, I think so. I mean, this kid has uh, got talent. is unbelievable. But we're going to come back here and watch uh, the second period here on Rogers TV. Are you the type who would keep going or stop? It's not easy to stop when you have an addiction. Legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction. It trivializes its consumption. Let's be vigilant. If you need help, visit portage.ca.
Ontarians have concerns about the future. The economy and inflation, housing affordability, the quality of education, and our fragile healthcare system. For the upcoming provincial election, Rogers TV brings you the candidates to talk about these and other important issues facing the community. Before you head to the ballot box, hear from the candidates on the local campaign on Rogers TV. Uh, here we are back at the Lumley Bayshore Community Center and 6 nothing. The Bug Juice North Stars in control in this game. It's just underway as we just played about 30 seconds of the first of the second period. What an opportunity there for Chris Atwood. Scores a goal, but foot in the crease doesn't count. Almost just as quick a start on sound got in the first. Atwood had an opportunity and couldn't got too close to the net. Campbell in the corner. Campbell sets it back out to McMillan. McMillan ball bounces around. And it's picked up by Clearview coming up the floor. It's Beaver. Beaver trying to get open. He's being stopped and hit from behind. Then he's knocked flat. And then the ball's knocked loose. Three on one. Now it turns into a two on one. Read it on goal. There's the shot. Good save by Lazor. Ball on the floor, trying somebody trying to pick it up. It went off. Uh, they're both pointing at each other, but I believe it went off a white jersey. That's the class six sport adage, though, Gordon. If it goes off you, you always point at the other team. Like, no, I didn't touch it. He did. <laughs> yeah, true enough. Trying to get it back across the floor does. Atwood trying to get set, and he's being bothered in that slot area. Outside, there's the shot. There's a pass. Good set. By Reed, Reed standing tall in the goal. As Romano had a chance to put it away. Own Sound North Stars getting set. They have that ball inside. Then he gets knocked out of a nice play by Romano. So he knocked the ball out of his stick. Two on. Not quite as the plays come off. There's the shot. It went off Reed and into the corner. Taking that ball up the floor. Thompson, Thompson stops, tries to set it up. Coming off the bench. And Thompson heads to the bench. And that was number 88. Fegan trying to come off the bench. And there's the shot in it. Oh, good stop by Lazor. Had no idea where it was once he made the save. Ball quickly up the floor to Milnes. Milnes wants to shoot it, but can't find this. Elaine, loose ball on the floor and picked up by Tom McDonald. And McDonald just twists and turns in the zone and then gets it across court. There's a little back pass. There's a chance inside. Didn't go. Probably wouldn't have count because his foot was in the goal crease. Hammered quickly. That would. There's two Atlas on this team, and one's Craig, and that's number seven. 77 is Chris. And we've called that number a lot today. And you got to expect to as this contest goes on. Little back pass by Saunders and trying to get somebody open. There's the shot, just whistled it wide. Three seconds on the shot clock. Got to make it quick. They do, and they score, and it counts. Riley Thompson gets his fifth goal this season for the Owen Sound North Stars. He just so happens, he only played one game this year. He'd now make it number two. He's got seven points in just the one game, make it eight and two, getting his fourth goal this season. Assist there from AC Andy Campbell. Oh, there was a great play too, because there's only three seconds left on the shot clock. You see him pick the ball up at the center, and then he just gets it right in, and what a great shot. Lazor didn't even move on it. North Stars have the ball, right in on goal. Couldn't corral that pass. Was Wyatt Barfoot. And then sent right back up the floor. 
to Anderson. Anderson has it. Anderson cuts, tries to cut through. Can't. Good defensive play. By the North Stars. Can't get in tight. They're having trouble getting through that defensive zone. North Stars are right there. They try to get it across off the stick. Trying to pick it off off the floor does. Oh, there's a nice pass. An off Reed. And the ball was after the shot clock. Reed still stopped that. I don't know how he did because he was coming in across that, that no man's land right in front of the goal. And North Stars. Bug Juice North Stars up seven to nothing here in the second period. Trying to move the ball around a little back pass. I'll tell you, Pat Saunders loves that play and he's used it two or three times in this period with successful ones. There's the shot. Reed again makes a big play and big save. And it's going to be a too many men call against Owen Sound. And Owen Sound guys are counting there on the bench. Vegan's counting. We'll see who the who Owen Sound sends. They're going to send Brady Stewart to serve it. Well, was he one to come off the bench? You got it. It's got it's similar. It's got to be somebody that's on the floor anyway. So Brady Stewart in the box outside. There they go again. There's a shot. Big number 90. That's high. Nice catch. Long lead pass gets it up. Couldn't get set, but just going to waste some time. Gets it back out to Wyatt Barfoot. And Zach Thompson made a nice play to get it up the floor. Just trying to waste some time because they're killing this penalty off. 124 left. If they could get a shot, this would be kind of, if they want, they're just going to wait it out. And Fairview has the ball coming up the floor. That's number 16, Moreno. Moreno looking for the big guns to come off the bench. Atwood. Atwood directing traffic here. Atwood again. He's going to get a chance. There's the shot. Reed makes the save and gets it off his shoulder. Ball comes back. No, nope, didn't. I thought he got a piece of it. Shot clock didn't change. Loose ball. Taken up off the floor, and that's Halls. Halls gets answered. Scores shorthanded. Halls gets it. And Pat Saunders comes up and gets the goal. And I believe it was uh, Tyler Hall that took it up the floor. Yes, he did. You see there breaking from the bench is Pat Saunders. He gets his first tonight. He had, a, he had two last night against Six Nations. Eight nothing now in favor of the Buggies North Stars. A complete 180 what happened last night, Gord. Well, Six Nations are going to come in here and play. They, this is a they're learning, and they they got to gel and they got to get together. Six Nations are a good, good team, and they're going to put it to you quickly. They spend a lot of time with the ball. If they do that, then they're going to score goals, and that's exactly what's happening tonight with 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 Owen Sound. Is they're doing exactly the same thing. Is that they're controlling the offense? They got sustained offense. 17 seconds left in the penalty. And that's They're, actually their first shorthanded goal. And they get it back, comes back out, hasn't got much time. Nine seconds, there goes the shot clock. Killed that penalty off really nice. Up the wall, 24, and of course that's Wyatt Barfoot. Barfoot just gonna set up, make sure people get, then he twists and turns and heads inside. Penalty over. Wyatt Barfoot still has the ball. There's a shot as he passed it back out, got to, got out to 44 Buck, and he just whistled one. Of course, off the pad of Lazor. Buck twisting. Little pass into the slot area. There's a back pass, and Lazor got a piece of that, and how I don't know. He got the shot clock back to 30. Who's got the ball? Number three, Jake McNabb. McNabb, Lazor just tries to squeal it. Does, couldn't get it. There's it down the floor. Loose ball. Finally picked up by number 22, Scott Edward. Edward 
Takes a shot. Reed has it. Oh no, they got one. Chris Atwood. Chris Atwood got the goal. I said he was going to have something special here for the second and third period. I'm being able to get his in the first, and he finally gets clear view on the board. Number 16 on the year for him. Well, they were talking about Pierce said, you know, you're going to limit him, and that's what you're going to try and do. He's going to score his goal, so you limit him and you, you, you play the rest of the team uh, kind of tight. So he has hadn't had a lot of room inside that slot area. That high post is a uh, oh, nice, nice move by Halls, and Halls gets on. Nice, Lazor makes the save, tries to slap the ball down. There's a swing and stick, almost a slash. And they pick the ball up. Good forward progress with that ball. And that's Beaver again. Beaver inside, nice cut, gets around the man. Loose ball. There's the shot. Reed makes the save, picking up the rebound. Here's Creemore across to this side to McNulty. McNulty into a look. Then he just dumps it off. There's the shot. Green. Reed again making a really good stop. Wow, he's just been unreal tonight. He's just given up the one goal, but man. Oh, look at this. Oh. And he can't hit the post. And that doesn't count. I thought that was a counter. You watch that play. Pass it back into the middle. There's a shot back pass outside. Picked up by Campbell. Campbell. Campbell just gets it in off the shoulder. Campbell's got that such big frame that he's kind of able to just move out of his way by just kind of walking. There's big number 15. He was right up the floor, and that's Ryan Haig. And Haig hit the shot, and of course, Garrett Reed right there. There's a shot. They're trying to get the ball outside, but they're not getting it there. It turns it inside. There's the shot off a of body in front. Atwood picks it up. Atwood's got a chance, takes a shot. Stopped again by Reed. Reed playing so well. Mike Vegan has the ball at center. We're going to be sending a crusher to the box. And is it Atwood? It looks like Atwood again. It's going to be another one against that way. He said in his interview, he'll get a chance to see him between the second and third period, Gord. He takes a lot of penalties, and he's got to limit his penalty taking and add it to the list. And he's not happy about this one. I think we're uh, getting a goal turning change. No, I think we're just getting a water break for the goalies. Oh, yeah, the boat there. I just, I just saw the Lazor head to the bit. And quickly, here are the scoring leaders. See at the very top, Chris Atwood. Currently, currently stuck a penalty. We saw Marshall Powless, Wes Whitlow, and Tyler Brown yesterday against Six Nations. But then you see there, Jake McNabb, sixth in points. He got a goal tonight. You also see Jordan Kaskin, and I haven't seen him yet tonight, number 23. He seems to only be playing away games. We'll see if he's back here next or, uh, next weekend when we uh, they play Clearview again on Friday. Back outside. Jake McNabb trying to get things set it up. They want to set it up. There's a it in tight. Back, there's a shot by Buck. McNabb takes the shot. Nice save by Lazor. Fairview balls. They bring the ball up. They're just going to waste some time, I think. Number 22, and that's Scott Edwards. Dumps it off to Anderson. Anderson just going to run it inside. Anderson has it. He passes across. Nice play, but missing the ball. Need a man on the floor as uh, Owen Sound has control. There are only three men out there. They're looking for four. We do have the shot from Andy Campbell over the net. We'll see if it beats the we'll see if it goes in or not. We're gonna get a chance to see it here. I want to see if it ends up beating the goalie. No, it doesn't. It even hit the pose. A great save there by Lazor. Lazor. Lazor's given up eight goals, but he has played fairly well in goal. It's that, he's not the problem. Defense is the problem. There's a shot. Lazor makes the save again. Stealing that puck in the. Oh, misplayed there. <laughs> that ball in the corner. 
Don't do enough with cross games to talk ball. I, I knew it was going to do something hockey today, but. Uh, talk about the Bayshore bounce. Yep. This is a big bouncing bounce. Back outside, Clearview has it, has it. They're killing off the penalty. Pressure. 12 seconds left in the penalty. Just going to waste some time in the zone. Running with that ball. Nice play. Going to get a scoring chance? No. That was 63 Bieber as he was, Lucas Bieber as he was just running around, and killed some time. Ball comes back to the North Stars. And that's number 88, Mike Feegan. 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 Cross. Tried to get it out to Sanders, and Sanders couldn't put his, get it off the end of his stick and couldn't get control. Loose ball in the corner, picked up. There's a nice play, good save by Lazar. And we're getting no goal. It wouldn't have counted anyway, but uh, possession to Cremor. Bringing that ball up the floor. That's number 15, Haig. Haig coming in on goal. Doesn't get a shot as he just put it wide. But that overhead camera really is kind of cool. There's the shot. No goal. That's it. It's in. I thought he stepped on the line, and that's what the referee was doing. That's number four, Tyler Venevery. You see here for Clearview. Waiting for the opportunity, centered in front and wide open is Jeff McNulty, who will end it. He'll make it now 8-2 in favor of Owen Sound. Now, Gord, you mentioned that six nothing could let, let you be a little complacent. They got up to eight nothing. I definitely think complacency kind of set in because they let in the last two goals to Clearview. Well, I hope that it, uh, just so the Clearview has made some good plays. And you, but Reed has been stellar tonight and just stopped a lot of shots. That last one I didn't think got in, but it did. Of course, the referee said so. Number nine is Gareth Haig. Haig waiting for a pass and trying to get it through center. Can't. On this side, shot wide by Mills. Passes up on the left and cross court. There's the shot and their whistle's coming. Somebody's going in the box. Another penalty. For the Crushers, I told you, 41 penalty minutes average the game, Gord. They average almost two, they over, average over two full periods of penalty minutes. The question I have is how many have they had so far? Yeah, I think the answer is too many. That's Lucas Beaver getting the minor. That's his second penalty. Beaver and Atwood have both spent, both spent four minutes in the box tonight, coming in with 24 for Atwood and 20, 19 for Lucas Beaver in penalty minutes. Two, uh, that is too many for their top two point getters. Well, uh, Atwood should, with his skill level, he, he would stay in, out of the box. Would be, you know, that, that's, that, that's something he has to learn. Otherwise, he's not going to survive in this league very long because as good as he is, you know, he's got to keep his head in the game because he's going to hurt his team more than he's going to help his team. Lucas, as you said there, Lazor there made the save and then made it with his head and popped with the straps loose in the back of his helmet. There's McNabb outside the circle, all setting up. Now they're starting to move. There's the shot. McNabb gets the shot. Lazor makes the stop. Loose ball. Picked up by Feegan. Feegan passes across. And they said Feegan's foot touched the crease, and he's questioning. Buck cutting across, trying to. North Stars get the ball coming up the floor. Brady Stewart. Stewart just going to dump it off to Feegan coming off the bench. This side, setting it up. Gets it over to Buck. Buck looking for the lane. Can't find it. Just can't get that shot. They got it off and then fired. By number 14, Pat Sanders. Sanders has a goal tonight. Coming up the floor is Buck. Lead pass. McNabb takes a shot. I don't know how that didn't beat Lazor. I don't know. And they're going to call shot clock. I told you there were some problems with the shot clock earlier for the Junior Bs. We're still having some malfunctions there with the shot clock. So the referees are having to do a little bit of manual. 
There we go. Clearview has the ball. And that's number 15, Moreno. Moreno passes it back outside to Bomberry. Bomberry. Bomberry twists it inside. Couldn't get, goes behind the goal. Bomberry tries to send it out front. Does. There's a lead pass. Shot off a body in front. That ball hurts when it hits you, I'll tell you. Five minutes remaining here in the second period. Owen Sound. Bug Juice North Stars are ahead. Eight to two. What an opportunity there. Riley Thompson had the chance, got tripped up. Oh, breakaway. In on goal. Beaver comes out of the penalty box, scores the goal. Nice play by Beaver. Picked up that ball coming out of the box and put it behind Garrett Reed as he had the whole floor. Talk about. Here comes Reed on goal. You see just a little move, boom. Getting underneath the arm of uh, Reed. Talk about complacency though, Gordon. Oh my goodness. Well, he come out of the penalty box, picked up the loose ball. There's the face off. Owen Sound with it. Then the balls. Ball's loose on the floor. Three more. Three, uh, fair view, pardon me. Half control in the Owen Sound zone. Back on this side to Goodchild. Goodchild. Passes it to Atwood. Atwood can score from almost any place on the floor. There's a back pass behind the net, trying to set it back up. Comes outside. There's the shot. Just misses the net. Mazor has it in his own zone. He can throw the ball up the floor, and he does. It hits the clock, I think. No, it was it was just caught there by, by I believe, uh, Taylor Hall. Tyler Hall, pardon me. North Star is heading to the bench. 71 is Tyler Hall. McNabb out in front. McNabb looking for the pass. Doesn't get it. Ball bounces away. Another full break for Cremor. Number 15. And, of course, Ryan Haig got the loose ball. Nobody actually even close to him as he got away with it as that ball bounced off Azor and into the area where he was just picking it up like a Hoover vacuum cleaner. And you can see him head down the floor. This is only his second game. If I, if I can uh, look at my numbers correctly. Oh, pardon me, that's actually the other Hag brother. Ryan actually also only played one game. He got three points in his one game. Now he's got two games. He's got two goals in two games. But that's four straight goals for the Crushers. Gordon, that's not what you want to see if you're a North Stars, Bug Juice North Stars fan here, letting in four consecutive goals and halving their lead now at only four goals. Well, it was 8 nothing starting the sec almost early in the second period, and now it's 8-4. to four. You don't want to give any team in this league an opportunity to come back, and, and the North Stars have got to get it together. And Lazor has come to play because he has stopped an awful lot of shots in the last year. Here they go again. Another lead pass, chasing it down. Gets it there, nice play, but he may get a penalty to holding on that. That was number 15, Ryan Haig. Are they, they going to give him a penalty shot? Oh my God, I think they are, Gord. Well, it's giving me a penalty shot. I've never seen a penalty shot in lacrosse before. Me either. That's the first Talk thing. about my hype, and they're going to say Chris Atwood. You can say anyone do a penalty shot, too. All oh, lacrosse is mayhem. I love it. Because the guy who got hauled down, if I'm not mistaken, was Tyler Goodchild. I think you're right, too. It was. And now Atwood will get a chance to take the penalty shot one-on-one well, on one with Garrett Reed. If anybody can take it, why wouldn't you give it to the leading goal scorer? Now here it comes. See what Reed can do. Would be no mistake. Now it's eight to five here in the second period. Two fifty-nine to go. What North Stars have got to do is they shut them down for the next three minutes, because we got two fifty-nine remaining in the next three minutes, and then come back to dressing room, come back out. This is a beautiful play. You're going to take. He took his time. Took his time. And then, Ooh, I don't know though, Gordon. His foot touched the crease. 
Yep. Mm, I don't know. I, I, Garrett pointed right at it. I, I want Mark to give me a second replay of that one because I don't disagree with Reed there. I think he might, might have been in the crease when he shot that. But nevertheless, that's five consecutive unanswered goals by the Crushers. Three more. Three more. Clear view, Crushers. There's another shot. Reed makes the save. North Stars coming up the floor, four on two. Nice lead pass. Back outside to Tom McDonald. McDonald, there's a loose ball in. And we're gonna get a second replay. There's a little kerfuffle in front of the Crusher's net. Watch Chris Atwood here. Mark's got a nice and slow form. And watch, I believe it's gonna be his right foot. Does he shoot it first? He, yeah. he might. But mm, I, I don't disagree with Garrett there that that shot was pretty close. Well, I thought it was. I thought it was. He got it away before the foot touched. So anyway, controversy, big period for the Crushers. Bug Juice, North Stars have to get a goal before the, the, the end of this period. They're dumping off the ball. They've just gone to sleep for a bit, and uh, they've allowed them to get that quick, fast break, score two goals on it, then the penalty shot. Began trying to get the ball, looking for an open line. Back outside to Campbell. Campbell, he's getting stopped. Going to be a high sticking call here, but I, I know, I know that your stick should be in control. But when a guy is almost on his knees and bending down in his haunches, and you hit his helmet, I'm not sure that's high sticking. The guy's going to give it to him for slashing. Okay. So the other second facts that you can get. They need a power play goal right now. They gotta score one. They, they gotta they can't get give confidence. up a shorthanded one either. Yeah, they gotta get some more confidence. I believe Clearview, if I'm not mistaken, looking back at my stat sheets, had uh, five shorthanded goals coming into this one. There's the, there's the shot. The Zord coming up big again and then passing it off quickly. North Stars pressing. Getting the ball back outside of the Crushers. The Crushers running it down. McNabb trying to take him out. That's number 22, and that's Todd Edwards. Off the post for Atwood. Oh, my goodness. I was right. The Crushers have four, had five short-handed goals coming in. They now got six short-handed goals after tonight. Good stop by Reed on that. Oh, Atwood seven. coming through the goal crease. Almost seven there with that opportunity. Great save there by Gary Reed. They're letting the Crushers back up and play defense, and they're stymieing them. What they've got to do is play a little more of a fast break game, I think. Cross it, Buck. Buck to McNabb. Buck, cross. There's scores! What a rocket there by Pat Sanders. Sanders gets his second of the night on a great shot. Now, that's what you got to do is move that ball around quickly, get it going. And then you'll get the open lane. You see him going to do that. You see McNabb has it on the replay. Cross four, and then it did. But there was a couple of movements before that. Buck ended it off to, to McNabb, and McNabb with his good eyes and good good feel for it got it across the, right across that area, slot area. And they finally stopped the bleeding, Gore. Now it, they've only let in five consecutive unanswered goals, and now it, they've got their own, so now they're back up by four. Time running down here in the in the second period. Checking off, good child. Oh, pardon me, that's not Graham Bergsman. Fegan has the ball, looking for a final scoring chance before this period is over. Fegan trying to get it set, just hanging onto the ball. Got to move it. Fegan, don't pass. Off to McNabb. McNabb has a chance. Sticks to the back shot just wide. McNabb gets the ball again, knocks it down. There's a back pass shot and didn't make it. There it goes. There was a flurry. And Andy Campbell and a guy, ooh, I don't know if that's going to be counted as a head bite, but they were kind of going at it, and I think they're going to send both. And Campbell still giving us some lip service. Probably going to get two minutes each for something. Two minutes each for uh, not being polite people, I think is what I'm going to call it, but it's Julian Morano there for. Uh, Moreno, pardon me, there for the Clearview getting the call, and it's big Andy Campbell. It was a big loss to this own sound own offense, just for this big body being able to break himself to the net. I think they're still chatting down there, I think. 
Well, that might be something to get sorted out in the third period. I hope not, because that's not the way to do it. Nine to five in uh, pressures. And they pull the goalies. Now it is five on four with the goalie being pulled for Clearview. Four on four for the five on four for the next six seconds with Clearview pulling the goalie. There's a shot. Reed makes the save and the ball is moving around. A lot better second period for the Crushers. They score five unanswered in it, Gord. And now it's a real lacrosse game. Well, yeah, but that's, we're looking based. You're right, it's a lacrosse game, but it was a lacrosse game at the first faceoff. But but it's starting to show like, like, like Mark said over the, the airways, I said something about being blew the shutout when I said something about eight nothing. But uh, he said there's never any shutouts in lacrosse. So. Full marks to the crushers in that period for coming up and, and doing it. What they did was that they, they kept the, the defense was solid and they kept the, the own some Bug Juice North Stars outside. So when the ball was bouncing around, they picked up some, the high slot area and then gone. They were gone, picked up two or three Two or three of those uh, goals and then a penalty shot, which we've never seen before either. Yeah, penalty shot, shorthanded goal, power play goal. They scored every which way you can think of to get their five in that period. But Owen Sound still scored three in the period and going into the third now, nine, uh, nine five. I well, believe uh, the, I am right. The boat definitely was leaking, and, and, and that was something that uh, we, we had to think about. And what they got to back, go back into in the dressing room get themselves together and start to realize they can't play that game against the crushers. You can't give, have a six nothing, eight nothing lead and then blow it and then give the crushers something. Hey man, we, we got, we, we can do this. We, we can beat this team. We got five goals in that period. Come on. Well, the, the, the North Sides have got to come out of that period and, and they got to regroup and come back yeah. and play like they did in the first. We're going to take a short break, do a little business and uh, we'll be back here on Rogers TV. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit stoptracktragedies.ca. Treaty in Cree is Naskumitoan, an oral agreement. And our agreements were always spoken. For George Spence, the core of treaty was we Chihiyoan, to help one another. And so we, the commissioners. He was there for the making of Treaty 9, where the Cree were told. We will honor this agreement together for as long as the sun shines and the waters flow. The Cree made their mark because they were assured that the land would be shared and they would always be able to harvest what they needed. George Spence was my great-grandfather. In his life, he saw many promises of the treaty go unfulfilled. Treaties were essential to the creation of Canada. First Nations still fight for the agreements to be honored. Hello everyone, your host Antoine Hashem here on the couch and welcome to season eight. Yay, eight seasons. And we've got a lot of awesome guests coming up, so keep watching. Spencer Fires here with Chris Atwood, leading point getter and goal scorer in the entire Senior B division, playing here for the Clearview Crushers. We've seen this between the second and third period. Chris, what has led to your success here in the Senior B division? Well, you know, I've played everywhere around the league, and I just try to bring what I know to my teammates and help my teammates out with the experience I've had. So, And they've been helping me out, getting me open, getting me the open shots. Absolutely. Uh, assistant GM and head coach of the Owen Sound Bug Juice North Stars, Keith, had a chance to talk to him before you, and he said you're a special player and you're a fun guy to coach against. Does that give you some confidence that other teams kind of take notice of you? Does that give you a little bit of an ego boost? I love it, though. I love it. Like It always feels good to come out to an away game and have coaches praise me like that, but I just go out there and do what I can for the team and hope that we do our successful. 
Absolutely. You guys are right now currently not in the top three of the Senior B divisions right now. What do you think you guys need to do to be able to get higher up in the division? To be totally honest, we have to sell the penalty box, myself included. I took in a lot of dumb penalties, but hoping to turn that around tonight. Absolutely against a kind of potent Owen Sound Bug Deuce North Stars. Only their second home game. They lost their home opener against Six Nations. Do you, are you worried that they're going to come up with a little more something to prove trying to win their first home game? Well, of course, they're, they're always wanting to win their home opener, but they lost last night. But of course, they want to win the second one next night, but uh, hopefully we can come in here and put a stop to that. Perfect. I'll ask you one easy one here at the end. What do you think you can beat the Owen Sound Bug Deuce North Stars? Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you so much, Chris Atwood, leading point getter and goal scorer in the entire Senior B division. Back up to me and Gord after the break. Thanks a lot, Spencer. to tune in to Great County Life at Home next week. We're going to be talking to John Farmer about lawn bowling. Is that four or five? He's lost count and still thinks he can drive. Do you think he knows that when he is caught and charged with impaired driving, he'll lose his license and a lot more? If he gets in his car, he'll face costs exceeding $20,000. Does he realize he could have a criminal record for his choice to drive? And it could be much worse if he crashes. Wonder what he'll be thinking tomorrow. I'm four, have a hold in one at one five. Visit arrivealive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive, drive so. Actually, it's not OLA, it's the Judge Junior B, but <laughs> Ontario Senior Lacrosse is it tonight. Go. I got it this time. So, uh, Spencer Byers, Gord Chapman, we bring this into your living room. We hope you're enjoying our lacrosse telecast this, uh, this evening. An amazing game. There was a tale of two periods, I guess, uh, to, to, because the own sound just totally dominated in that first period, and then they let it slip away in that second period, and were dominated by the Crushers, who I don't think is as good a team. As, as as the North Stars. Well, the first period's any indication, Gord, I think you're right. I mean, 6 nothing after one. They scored, I think, three or four of the goals within the first eight minutes. It was a massacre. The Owen Sound massacre in the first period. Second period, as you said, it's a tale of two different periods. It was two different games in the end. Like, the second period, the, the Crusher score five. Owen Sound only scores three. Currently up nine, I-9-5. Nine, they score one really one late goal on the power play to be able to put them up by four. But the Crushers had a great, they had a penalty shot goal, they had a, another shorthanded goal to add to their sixth shorthanded goal of the season, which is, I believe, second in all of the uh, OSL, I believe it's called, the Ontario Series Lacrosse for seniors. Make, make sure I don't mess that up. I also quickly want to mention, though, as I talk about how good Cleary was in that second period, these teams are going to get a lot better with what major series, the, uh, the MSL, because they're not having a league currently. They're still having a brouhaha over some of the uh, legalities of moving Doan Sound. So their players aren't playing. So they're going to be moving over to the Senior B and other leagues. So it'll be interesting to see if how many kind of trickle down to Senior B and how good some of these teams can become. Can we mention the, the teams that are that are, <laughs> that are in trouble? But uh, Yeah, I, I find that controversy really, really amazing that uh, that is going on. And, and just it's over a name in... Uh, uh, I can understand it, and I can because they don't own it. Yeah. And uh, uh, when the individual bought the team, he may have changed the name of it, but he still has the name, the rights to that 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 location. So they can't really do that. I understand that what's going on, but makes it for interesting news, especially yeah. that going on in in se senior lacrosse. But uh, somehow or other, these players are going to play, and you're going to see them. Don't be surprised that even though they stay up here in Owen Sound, so. Uh, but uh, that's one of the things that are happening in the senior league right now. The, um, so many of the 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 things that are that 
could be happening that are positive, and this story is is leading leading the way the whole time. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what I mean, though, because so some of those players who are you know NLL players are top you know lacrosse players in the world play in the MSL. So without that league being in, they can either go to the Western version of it, who play for the Man Cup, or they can come down to Junior B, and only six teams in Junior B. We could have a very st couple stacked teams here, and if Owen Sound's one of the top three. They could be getting some top, top names from, you know, the major series lacrosse because if they have nowhere else to go, you, m you might as well play a little bit of summer lacrosse when the NLL is just finishing up now. Well, this should be a lot of this, this story that's going to be a, a couple more chapters before it's all over. But this chapter is particularly over right now on, uh, on uh, Rogers TV because we're going to take a short break, do a little business, and we'll come back and see it. Yeah, we actually can't sadly go because we know we're gonna. I knew they were gonna start early because the Crushers just came out in about a minute and a half. Because we we try to play it for the game clock you see behind us, and sometimes they start a little early on. I think they're gonna start right about now anyway, upsettingly. Well, let me rephrase that and say we're gonna start a new chapter here in the third period and be <laughs> on Rogers TV as we bring you the third period here uh, of the the Bug Juice North Stars and Creamore Crushers and uh, this third period could be a barn burner. Oh, wait, you got to expect so. Both teams have been really physical. Both teams have, well, obviously with Kilvery averaging 41 penalty minutes a night, adding to their total, you know, tonight with how many penalties they've taken already. And them scoring five goals as well. It's going to be interesting to see what this battle becomes as you see their Owen Sound on your screen getting ready for this third period. I saw the Crusher start coming out in a minute and a half, and I knew we'd have no time for a break because I knew they'd want to start early. When did you get so smart, Spencer? Because I didn't notice that at all. So. I, I was just looking at the screen behind me. I saw the clock, and I kind of saw back and saw them and said, Mark, now nah, we can't go for a break. There's no way we're going to be able to fit that in with the way the Crushers are looking because they're coming out really early. So there must be spry here for this third period, Gord. 20 minutes of play left. Own Sound leading this 9-5. to five. Crushers on the move. And this is the third period. Ball in underneath our broadcast booth. Tough to see it. Big number 17, and that's Zach Thomas has it. Just dumps it off to Feagan. Feagan has it. Trying to get it sorted out. Double minor, playing four on four. Just at the end of the period, ball bouncing through that checkered area into the slot. Feagan has it, takes the long shot off the, off the net, and the ball just goes bouncing down the floor. And there's Reed. He just throws it right back up and makes sure that the crushers have to come the full length of the field to get there. Pass right across, trying to sort it out. Got a lane, gets right in on goal, takes the shot, just hits Reed on the shoulder. As Reed just hugged that post back across the floor. Four on four really gives the opportunity for more talented players like Chris Atwood, more floor to run on. It's why they got rid of it in the 80s and 90s because Wayne Gretzky and the Oilers were just disgusting on four on four. So they even got rid of it in the NHL because of how good the Oilers could be on four on four. And you, you know, you see it today with the bringing them bringing it back. There's a shot right on goal and Lazora makes it a save again. He's been pretty good in that second period as he shut down the offense. Bug juice. Waiting for the crushers to come up the floor. They do. In behind the corner, and that's uh, Jake Bomberry. Bomberry has it back across this side. There's Atwood. He takes the shot. Make it a hat trick. And Atwood's got three. We, Keith Pierce said, you know, he's going to get his, and oh boy, was he right after that first period. He is going to get his, and he's got three tonight. Well, there's the shot just outside the slot area at the top of the post and just put it away. You'll see it come again. There it is, didn't waste any time. Garrett Reed uh, did his best to get that, but he placed it so nicely. Oh, he can't do that. Bone sound ball. 24, and of course that's Barfoot, Barfoot. He sends it back. Barfoot trying to get free. There's the shot by by Saunders, and he had it. They're coming off the floor. There's another one in on. No way that didn't get through. Wow. That's big number 10. Andy Campbell had a shot right on goal, and Lazor has come to play in this last little while. He, 
He, uh, Campbell came out of the box on the four on four and had an opportunity, but a great save there by Lazor. Atwood has it again. Atwood always dangerous. There's the shot and gets another one. Oh my goodness. Atwood picks up number four. And it's a two goal lead for Owen Sound. This are just like the second period, Gord. This is not a good start for Owen Sound. They've scored 30 seconds into the first period. The Crusher scored 30 seconds in the second period, but it was disallowed by Atwood. Now they've gotten two in the first two and a half, and we got a two goal lacrosse game, Gordon. This is not good for an Owen Sound team. You who had Atwood. six goals in the first period. See the replay is Atwood. That put that ball right on the floor. North Stars trying to control that ball, get it back. That's Hall's at it. Going up the floor is Wayne Byfoot. Barfoot gets it back to Saunders. Saunders trying to get inside. Can't. It's forced back out. He's being held and no call. Well, there, there will be, Gord. You called it for him. It will be a hole. Well, I'll tell you, he has had him strung up worse than trying to have a ballroom dancer holding on to him. And just, uh, and they're finally getting a goal. They got to go back out now. They got to make this count. They can't allow the crushers to get, and they gotta watch the shorthanded goal too because Lazar is one of the best at getting that ball up the floor. I quickly want to say there, Scott Edwards got the call for Clearview, and the ref was telling him to get faster to the box or give him another minor. So a little bit of gamesmanship there by, by Edwards. He didn't speed up one bit, was gonna take the extra minor if the ref decided to give it to him, and he thought better of it, I guess. Threw the ball away, and of course, that's a play that you gotta watch. Saunders, David. And yeah, they're gonna call that. Yeah. What? They're not calling a penalty. No, they're calling Fegan for uh, an extra shove. I'll call it an illegal shove, is the word I'm gonna use. I thought for a moment that the pressure's in on goal. Romano has a chance. Reed makes the save that time. They're on the power play, and they're not very smooth with it at this particular point. I just wanted to see where this ball is going to go. Goes back out to Buck. Buck to McNabb. There's McNabb. He takes scores. McNabb gets it. And he knew that's a big goal. That was a rocket there by Jake McNabb. That's his second tonight. His, uh, look into my stat sheets, his seventh on the year, leading goal scorer for the Owen Sound Bug Juice North Stars. And it's now 10-7. They got back a three-goal lead. Oh, what a shot. You saw it again on replay. You see the pass come across. They give it up to Fegan. He'll just drop it back out to, to McNabb. And Manag doesn't break through the five-hole. Lazor didn't get a stand a chance on that one. A good, good release, good quick shot, good and hard. Pressure ball. And a lot of fouls on the faceoff with the ball turn. They don't get it for, done smoothly, and uh, ball gets turned over. There's a shot inside. What a catch there and, by Gary Reed. And Reed picked it off as it was going to the outside of the goal. Here they come through center. On full fly, there's a shot just whistled wide. Because Brady Stewart had a chance. Stewart now heading back to the bench. Tyler Halls controlling that ball on the right side. It passes it off. Shot clock gets over. This Wyatt Barfoot had a chance but didn't do anything with it and becomes crusher ball. 15 minutes gone here in the third period. Bug Juice North Star is up nine to seven, 10 to seven. So that goal just a little while ago. Atwood has the ball, tries to pass it back, picked off. Running full bore down the court. Passes it back, went off the twist, twist and turn, trying to get things set up. On to pass the ball on the right. North Star is trying to get something sorted out. McNabb has it. Dumps it into the corner to Fegan. Fegan tries to turn around. Does get it, picks it up. Nice play. Fegan trying to get in, takes the shot. 
And Lazor makes the save. Got a full shot clock again. Twisting and turning inside Fegan gets it back on this side, number 17. What a shot, shot just wide. Fegan. Zach Thompson's had a chance. Thompson coming back and covering number 15, uh, Ryan Haig, as he went down the floor looking for that long lead pass. Atwood has it. Atwood. He's not only is a good goal scorer, but he can set him up too. Gets a lane, tries to gets it back. Loose ball on the floor. Picked up by Anderson. Anderson across to Atwood. Pardon me, across to Flannery. Flannery takes a long shot. Reed had no problem with that. Ball flipped out to Tyler Halls, and he just dumps it off to Thompson. Thompson got a chance, gets inside, but can't get the ball to him. There's another chance, comes across, McNabb has it. Twisting and turning, McNabb has a chance, trying to get somebody open, turns around, shoots it. Loose ball in the goal crease. And Lazor picks it up. McNabb had a chance, but just couldn't get that lane and couldn't get it past Lazor. Lazor has played really well tonight, even though he's given up 10 goals. Because there has been sustained offense by the North Stars. Crushers take the shot again. Garrett Reed in position, makes the play. Reed has it. Gets it up the floor. Nice move to Fegan. Fegan couldn't get it by Lazor. Crusher's bringing it up the floor. Just dumps it. Gets it up to Beaver. Beaver's got a goal. Crusher's back to Atwood. Atwood cutting inside. Tried to get the pass, couldn't get it to him, and it was wide. Picked it up by Bergsman. Bergsman. Left wing, just running. Gets it back across it with a back pass. Didn't count. Ball goes, back to own sound. Tom McDonald, McDonald has it. McDonald is bringing it up the floor slowly, just dumps it off. Got a player coming off the bench, and of course, that's Sanders. Pat Sanders. McNabb again. With the ball, there's across this side. Nice play, little deep, little shot. Good stick work by Lazor as he got a piece of that. What a pass back and feed or just pump it to himself. North Stars. Too many men on the floor. Too okay, many against Clearview. Double it up. That should be a two minute minor. They won't do that anymore. Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you couldn't hear the press box. Tanner Buck has it in his, at the top of the post. There's a shot pass across. Nice pickup by McDonald or, or Campbell. And ball's turned over. Whistle again. Here comes Creamer. Creamerview, pardon me. Second time I've done that today. I apologize. Clearview. Has the ball, trying to twist it inside. Trying to get that pass, can't cross court. There it is again on nice play. The ball was stolen by Tyler Halls, and Halls gets it up quickly to Zach Thomas. Thomas has a chance, but he's just gonna sit back and wait for some help. Does, passes it off, and does get it inside. Loose ball in, the, in that checkered line area, in the slot. Long lead pass, good defensive play by Tyler Halls. So we're actually... Ball comes back outside to Campbell. Campbell takes the shot, good save by Lazor. Look, look. Clearview, nice lead pass, or nice pass. Dante Romano gets a read on goal. Good save 
I'm not sure whether he, Reed got him, but he didn't give him anything to shoot at. Loose ball and picked up by Anderson, and then Anderson heads to the bench. Trying to get that ball around is number 90, Gareth Haig, and Haig can't do anything with it. Shot clock goes. Own Sound has the ball. Of course, that's number 12, and that's Jordan McMillan. McMillan passes across. Got to move that ball quickly against this team. They do. Here's a chance. There's a shot off the toe of Lazar. And they got it. I think a check from behind there in the corner. But no call and no penalty, so. Anyway, the ball's on sound ball. Well, you're gonna give the goalies a water break here. We could like to thank Boston Pizza for the crew refreshments here tonight. You can see them at 1606 16th Street East here in Owen Sound or call them at 519-370-2003. They're gonna help them because they help us. And I don't know if you stole a couple pieces, Gord, before you came up, no. but I, I had some of my uh, Bomb's home cooking, so I'll be taking some pizza home tonight. Oh, you are such a. Anyway. <laughs> what am I, Gord? Boston Pizza, folks. Today, <laughs> they are one of the best in the city with supporting minor sports, and we really appreciate the fact that they are helping our crew out and getting a little bit of advertising on top of it. Great. They also have the uh, takeout service, so, and anything on their menu, so all you got to do is have a look up on the website or end up or call and they'll give you some idea what it is. But generally, uh, great place in Owen Sound. They, they support minor sports uh, right through all levels. And, uh, and here actually are the upcoming home games. You got the Clearview game tonight, or uh, pardon me, you got the Clearview game next weekend on the Friday, the June the 3rd. I will be here for that one. Then I will be gone for the fourth against home at Oakville. A team has already beat Owen Sound this season. They play another two straight home games, a home and home, a home and home against Ennismore on the 11th and 12th of June. There's a shot right on goal by number 16, Moreno. As he gained, took that ball the full length of the floor. And Garrett Reed was right there, Johnny on the spot to make the play. Coming up, number 41 is Coulter. Coulter just dumps it off and heads to the net, looking for a pass. Oh, yep. Clearview almost had a free opportunity there, but mishandled. Ryan Haig, and he heads to the bench as he mishandled that ball as they had a real chance to get that ball inside. Of course, there's Chris Atwood. He's got four goals tonight, leading scorer in this senior division. And you can see why. Oh, he plays so well. A little better effort this period by the North Stars. Eight minutes to go, and they're up 10-7, to three-goal lead. But, boy, in lacrosse, that is not anything sure. A little problem holding onto that ball inside that circle, and the ball ends up going to the Crushers. They move it around. Jordan Robertson, Robertson, twists and turns coming inside. Robertson looking for a lane, passes it back over the stick of the player. And here comes the North Stars, three on one. There's the shot. What shot's a going. goal. It didn't go? It didn't go. Didn't go. I guess Lazor made the save. Ball up to Luca Romano. And then Romano trying to get in on goal as they're out on the floor, Jake Bomberry, along with that one. Bomberry tries to get it to does. Good stop. Garrett Reed coming up big in this period. 7.28 remaining, three goal lead by the North Stars. Pass across, this is senior lacrosse here at the Bayshore Community Center. Owen Sound Bug Juice. North Stars up by three. Ball gets fired off of, and off the shoulder of one of the players in front. Whoa, that thing nearly crossed the line, but the whistle had been blown and possession back to the North Stars. 
coming up the wing and just dumping it off was Tom, was Tom McDonald. Out on the floor, McNabb. Saunders, Saunders twists and turns looking for the ball. He's got knocked out of his stick. And two North Stars couldn't control. Number 10, Anderson, and Anderson Ooh. just gets hammered. And the ball into the stick of Garrett Reed, and well, that was quite the shot. Back outside. Van O got that absolute hammer there. Jordan McMillan. Twisting and turning. There's a twist. There's a turn. Gets a ball knocked out of his stick. McNabb trying to control it again. Gets back after it. McNabb going to win this fight. No. Nope. Shot clock goes. Time a factor now for the Crushers. They're down by three with 544 remaining here in the in the third period. Crushers have the ball. Bergsma. Bergsma had it, passes off, trying to get set in the lane. Atwood has it now. Atwood coming in on goal, shoots. Stopped by Reed. And the whistle goes, and possession to the Crushers. Ryan Haig, and Haig heading back to the bench. Atwood has it. Atwood. That was Graham Berksma, pardon me. Berksma has it again. Atwood is trying to get loose. Berksma in on goal. Nice save by Reed as he covers a lot of that net. Reed trying to get the loose ball. And then finally picked up by Tyler oh, Hall. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh, goodness. I think that's Chris Atwood giving him a punch. And Gary Reed now trying to make sure nobody else gets involved. Well, I'm not sure whether uh, it's 21. Ken Colson is even going to get a penalty. Is that when he's heading to the bench? That's that's the thing that you can't have happen. I don't care how good a player you are. The guys that are the stars in the leagues, whether it's hockey or lacrosse or or football, they know that or any basketball, they know that they can't get into foul trouble or penalty trouble because if they end up playing no time on the court or the foul shots they place. But uh, well, we'll see what they give Atwood. If they give Atwood, that's a huge loss. If he gets five for fighting and he it's was over, it, he it, was it, basically assaulting. Him. It, it, if, if they give him a major, the game's over. Yeah, because there's not even five at the game. I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news and it's Clearview has six shorthanded goals this year, so they could definitely score shorthanded. But a five-minute major with under five minutes to go, it's a recipe for disaster. And the best player on your team sitting in the penalty box. So, all at McNabb. McDonald tried to make the play. Sanders tried to make the play. Lost the ball. Here they come, the Crushers again. Crushers coming up the floor. That's Scott Edward. Edward just dumps it back. They've got a Get some offense, Luca Romano, Romano. And I, you may see the goaltender come up and play short. Sometimes that happens in lacrosse. And he can handle the ball. The source one of the best ball handlers I've seen so far. There's a shot just whistled it wide. Paul, ball bounces back to center. Shot clock goes. Own sound ball at, at the center line. Picking up the ball and getting set with it, and that's wide barfoot, and he hits to the bench. Saunders. Cross court to Buck. Buck's got a couple tonight. Buck again, there's the shot. Lazor makes the save. Back outside, Sanders, back pass to Buck. Buck gets it again, and Pressures get control of the ball. Good speeds. Number 88, number eight, Romano. Romano can't score, doesn't get the shot. Trying to get control, gets through the, the defense, then just knocked down. A good stop again by Reed. 
right now, Reed to me has been the difference in the game so far, especially in this third period. Not many goals have been scored. Campbell waits for help to get off the bench. Buck come off the bench. McNabb to Buck to McNabb to Feagan. Feagan dropped it to McNabb. Got to get into the open area. There's a shot on goal. Good stop again by Lazor. Loose ball and then fired wide. And we're getting the slashing call. And they're going to give it to Clearview. It's now there'll be a five on three, four, two minutes or less. Well, they got 252 remaining in the game. They need to score some goals and they end up with a five minute major that is in there. This the penalty bug has come up and bite them right in the place where you don't, don't want to be bitten. And uh, uh, 41 minutes in, in penalties averaged the last five games scored. Uh, not a recipe for success, for no, sure. But any sport, it, 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 the good players have got to be the disciplined players. When you're a good player, you're sitting in the box for the last five minutes of the game, leading scorer in the league, you know, there has to be, you have to, I'm sorry, that falls on the coaching, and because they have to, they have to do something about that and, and, and get that under control. It's going to be a long, long, lonely season being at the bottom of the league. Crusher's trying to get through. And of course, that's Bergsma. Bergsma still got... The North Stars get the long lead. This is Sander. There's the shot. Good stop. Loose ball in front. Fighting beautiful play by number 22, Scott Edward. But the big save was Jake Lazor. And he made a nice, two nice stops on that play and then picked up the loose bound. Get five, 155 remaining here in the third period. High mo taken by Clearview. Tom McDonald there had the opportunity to get the second opportunity off of the uh, chance from uh, Pat Sanders. But Owen sounds bit. I'll go with, with a minute 55 left. A minute and three. Well, from the two man, the double man advantage, and they have the, the the five minute major will take us past what time has left on the clock. So they're guaranteed to stay on the man advantage. They're currently guaranteed to stay on the, the two man advantage for another minute. So this game's locked up in favor of them. Now it's just a matter of what how many they're going to be up by when the game when the time runs out. Well, I think the most thing important is just to keep control of the ball. Don't give them anything. Exactly. Yeah. You know, uh, be be smart with the play. Yeah. Don't don't know. don't give them hope. Yeah, give them a good shot. If you got a good shot, get it done. You know, uh, and that's that, that that's what that's all about. They got two minutes to go. Minute 55 seconds. Just don't allow them to get set up. You can see the goaltender. He's just standing right there. Looking back outside to Romano. And they're going to pull the goalie, Gordon. They're going to pull the goalie. They're going to try and take some. They handle the ball really bad. Well, they're going to send him back. This is going to be an interesting strategy. Well, as soon as they change hands with the ball, ball comes up to White Barfoot. Barfoot. Cross, cross the floor, gives it back to Buck. Buck gets it into McNabb, or Feagan rather, or McNabb, right? McNabb twisting and turning, little back stretch. Oh, I'm off, I thought it was in because it went off the backboard and hit the uh -oh, net. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here we go again. I, I was asked by one of the security members, Mitch Kaufman, earlier if this game was gonna get chippy because he said that he saw the penalty minute averages for Clearview. And I can definitely say it's getting chippy, and they're going to send, and I believe that is uh, nope. Craig uh, Craig Atwood, who's got 51 penalty minutes on the year. They sent him home early, shower with 111 left, and these two teams are jawing off now. Well, they can jaw all they want. The score, I mean, all you got to do is point at the scoreboard, and they, they've shot themselves in the foot. They had on sound on the run. Then they shot themselves in the foot, and, and about the 10-minute mark, they come up with a... There you see big number 24, and that's Wyatt Barfoot heading into the bench, taking his hat off. He's not getting a penalty. North Stars with one minute and 11 seconds on the clock. They got another major. Craig Atwood got a major for slashing. So it's going to be five on three for the rest of this hockey, or plus the hockey lacrosse game. I finally did it, Gord. 
I was waiting for it. I did it twice already, so you're forgiven. Wow. I think Charles is just going to hold it. Campbell's got a hold of it now. I think we're just going to chew the rest of this shot clock out, and we're going to send it home at 10-7. It looks to be the reasoning from both sides. We'll see if the Clearview Crushers have the same uh, idea. Well, there's 44 seconds left, and it's, there's a shot. He's good. The Zor's looking at him. What are you doing? Game's over. And we'll see what Clearview does. They, they, the shot clock and game clock is different by about a second and a half. Too many men on it. No, I, I think I was asking what's going on here. Because I think... Yeah, because yeah, I, yeah, I, I think Mark Perry told us. Like, the guy came out of the box as they pulled the goalie. But because he's another major, they're still down two guys. Well, he could, was, shouldn't have been allowed out of the box in the first place because it's a delayed penalty. And they're telling him one of the guys to get off for Clearview. And it's going to be Owen sound ball now for, for the rest of the game because the reset of the shot clock is going to do it for this one. Well, I'll tell you, what we were talking about, Owen Sound did come out of that dressing room and played a lot smarter and a lot sounder ball in lacrosse. Or rather, they didn't have the big, the big period like they did in the first one but they sure played smarter and didn't allow the questions to get moving like they did in that second period. Now you can hear them banging on the boards as the clock is going down. And, and this game is in the box. And it, uh, the first part of the game, Spencer, there was two, you know, the tail of two periods. And this particular period was a totally different period as the the own sound North Bug, Bug Juice North Stars play some solid defense. Absolutely. This, this game was really strange if you have to really break it down. Because the North Stars average 8.4 goals a game. They score six in the first 20 minutes of play, scoring four of those in the first eight minutes of play. From the first period onward, they score four goals the rest of the game. They win, they score 10 total. Clearview who averages nine goals a game, scores none in the first period, are down six nothing. Come into the third down nine five after scoring five unanswered goals in the third, in the second period, and allowing a late one on the power play, because like, they take 41 minutes of penalties per game on average, which is a ridiculous amount. And they added to it again tonight with three major five minute penalties, not including all the minors they got. So, it's a hard game to unpack because you have so much to kind of go with. You don't know what angle to take. You take the first period angle where Owen Sound started off so well, Gore, that we all admitted how good they were and then kind of flounder as the game goes longer. Or we talk about Clearview starting out so slow and then picking it up as Chris Atwood, who got one major and at least two or three minors, had four goals tonight. Well, that's the whole thing. Uh, we were talking with, uh, with, with Pierre at the beginning of the game, the interview he did. Talks about he, he said Atwood was going to get his number. So you, you, we, we could give him at least three anyway, and he ended up with four. But what happened was, in fact, is the Owen Sound's offense was just clicking on all these cylinders that first thing. Second period, I, I, as a, I never really played lacrosse, but I played sports. And I know you give a team an inch, and, I, you, and they'll take a mile. And I think that's what happened. They got a couple of goals. Next thing you know, they're on a roll. The big gun started to shoot. He got four goals in that period. So... But I think the key to the whole game was number one, Reed, who played a solid third period, allowed a lot, I think, just the one goal. Not only that, but he made some big saves, handled the ball well in the zone. And then on top of that, they started to play some defense. Yeah. And the defense, they closed it off, and, and, and Clearview could not get through that, that, that zone defense. If that's, uh, and they just closed it off. The shooting lanes were almost eliminated. So. It was a game of, 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 of ebb and flow, and I'm starting to, you know, tale of two periods and ebb and flow, and, you know, you start to think about uh, a different style of game. I mean, you know, they didn't play 60 minutes. They played 20 minutes tough, 20 minutes they shouldn't have even, they didn't show up. The third minute, they, period, they played a solid defensive game, end up pulling out, out of the fire and winning the game 10-7. 
Yeah, it's her second win here against Clearview State Bottom at one and six on the year. Owens Sounds now, I believe, will stay in third place at three and three. I don't know if they actually do end up leapfrogging. I'm trying to remember who's actually second currently because it's not Oakville because they lost their game and if I believe we're in our first. Owens Sound actually might be second currently. Because I know Brooklyn's also in the bottom. I'm trying to think of the sixth team. To be honest, let me take a quick guys. look at my stat sheet. Ennis Moore, that's who it is. Ennis Moore beat Oakville. Pardon me, Ennis Moore is currently second. I believe they'll get leapfrog because they only have two wins on four games played. So Owen Sound will take sole possession of second place with this win being three and three currently. So now Ennis Moore, who beat Oakville, who beat Owen Sound, have only played two games this season. So they are very far behind the rest of these teams who have played five and six games scored. So Owen Sound does have a leg up in that reason, but Ennis, or pardon me, Oakville does have a chance though. They have four games in hand on basically everybody. So they have a chance to kind of make it up and hopefully hopefully get some, I'll use the word, the cliche, momentum as the season goes on. Well, I'll tell you right now, folks, so we saw a, a fairly good game this afternoon with, uh, with this evening, pardon me, with all the ups and downs of the lacrosse game. And uh, we hope you enjoyed it on Rogers TV. We really appreciate you allowing us into your living rooms. On behalf of Spencer Byers, my good buddy over here, who's, who's usually on time. But we, uh -huh. we've, we've had... <laughs> Thanks, Fred. <laughs> Spencer, it's Spencer Byers, and I'm Gord Chapman. We hope you enjoyed our telecast on Rogers TV. Thanks so much. Good night. Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. Focus better. Heal better. Sleep better. Partner better. Create better. Love better. Breathe better.